This lesson is on indirect measurement and also some attributes of similar triangles. So indirect measurement is the act of using similar triangles to calculate an unknown measurement. And basically it all boils down to finding out the two similar triangles. Okay, so there's your definition. And what the popular one is of when we have a shadow problem. And I have drawn a flagpole and I can in a shadow of 37 and, and a half feet and then also a, uh, a shadow of like myself. I'm six foot tall and the shadow is seven foot three. And what we'd like to do is find out how tall the flagpole is. Well, because the, uh, the sun is so far away and if we, we measured this at the same time, these light rays would be coming down parallel. And if those two are parallel, then the angle that they hit the earth would be congruent. Okay, that's the first thing that we need to we need to establish that those angles would be the same. And there's different ways of uh, presenting this. I could stand in the shadow right there and make my shadow overlap the flag shadow, um, so that you could see that the, the angle still would be the same. Okay. Um, the other thing that we need to assume is that the flag is perpendicular to the earth, and that I in Indeed, am standing perpendicular. If we have that, then we have two angles of this large triangle, and we have two angles of the small triangle, making these two triangles similar. Now it just becomes a problem of algebra and setting up the proportion. Uh, we have uh, x is to 37 and a half, and I'm going to go ahead and change two decimals, and that's 37.5. Don't write 37.6, because that's a half a foot. And this would be, the side would be my height, would be six foot. The shadow here is seven foot three inches, which would translate to seven foot and a quarter of a foot. Yeah, I did that on purpose, so that you would get... Uh, more comfortable with changing from decimals to inches. Now, if we multiply both by 37.5 on both sides. Giving me my answer of, so 6 times 37.5, which is a 225 divided by 7.25 and then you get some kind of answer of x is equal to 31.034482 basically about 31 feet I'll move that up for you so now I have measured the flagpole without actually climbing the flagpole or putting up a, uh, I don't know, so whatever, so sending somebody else up the flagpole or, or, or a ladder or anything like that. So I've used my shadows to help me out. All right, now let's talk about uh, the attributes of similar triangles. What I'm giving here is two triangles which are similar. I have uh, triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFG. And you know, because they're similar, their angles must be. Uh, congruent and the sides are proportional. So if I have if, uh, this side, this AB, we talked about this, AB compared to BC is going to be of a ratio that's similar or is equal to like EF compared to FG. No big deal. Right. Um, but if I were to, let's say, create a median of this triangle, and a median of this triangle, they would not be equal, but it stands to reason that they are also in that same ratio. Right, because this is just a dilation of 
the other triangle, right? One way or the other, right? So, if this is X and this is Y, it is also, if I'm doing, uh, I'm not doing A, B to B, C. I'm going to go, let's, 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 let's go. If I say A, B compared to E, F, that would be of the same ratio of X as compared to Y. The median of this one compared to the median of the other triangle. I could also uh, make an angle bisector. Uh, let's see, we'll make an angle bisector of this angle. And if I make an angle bisector of the corresponding angle over here, I of course am sketching, then that length is of the same ratio as x to y. Uh, I don't know what we'll call that. Call that A, call this B. It would be the same ratio. And that, you know, I don't think that's, that, that's too hard to understand. Uh, because if I dilated this up, it would match exactly on that. So, as a matter of fact, anything you want to do. You could make a new drawing, make a new, if you made a perpendicular from B down to this, it would be, if you did the same thing to the other similar triangle, it still would be of that same ratio. So, in general, uh, the parts, anything you want to do, proportional parts conjecture. If two triangles are similar, then the lengths of the corresponding altitudes, the medians, the angle bisectors, and like I said, anything that you do, as long as you do it the same way on the uh, similar triangle, uh, are um, proportional to the lengths of the corresponding sides. So, fantastic, right? Uh, I don't think that's too much problem. Now, let's do something completely crazy. Alright, so, I don't have similar triangles here. But I'm going to use similar triangles. I am going to take any old triangle and I'm going to bisect an angle. All right? So I've got this triangle and I've bisected one of the angles. You, well, you'll say, Mr. Word, well, well big deal. Now, now uh, let's put some side links on here. I'm going to use variables because I don't know how long these are. Let's make this an X this a Y and it's going to cut it off it and you and I did this purposely it's, it doesn't cut it right in the middle it cuts it you know it's the angle bisector so and let's say make the small side A and this, and this long side B now I don't have similar triangles yet minimum I need two angles to make similar triangles so let's do that I am going to drop a perpendicular from this vertex. And I'm going to make a right triangle. Shoom, shoom, shoom. See that? And that triangle has X as the hypotenuse, some height, it, uh, whatever, I don't know, that A is over there, something like that. Then I'm going to make a right triangle out here. Maybe we should so call these, we'll, we'll label these altitudes. We'll call this one H, we'll call this one K. Now, I have a right triangle here that has a 90 degree and has this one. And now I have, using that same one, I have a, an angle that's congruent and a right angle. So, in essence, you must see that this triangle has to be similar to this triangle. Right? That seems it they both have a right angle and they have half of this angle. Alright? So if I am making a comparison, let's see, the altitude of this one, that short leg H compared to X, or how about we we can do H to X or we can do H to K. How about that? Well, let's do that h to k altitude that right side to that side would be the same as x to y 
Okay? That's not too bad. Okay? But how does that help me with my original triangle? Remember my original triangle is right here. And it had those side lengths A and B. Okay, so now that's a right angle. It's still going to be a right angle on the other side. And there's an A and there's a B. Okay, so, but in the middle here, I have two vertical angles. You see that? So this triangle here must be similar to this one because they have two angles. Each has a, a right angle and one, and one of those vertical angles. So now if I compared H to K of this one, I guess I'll write it here. H compared to K and that triangle right there, that's the hypotenuse of that little triangle of H compared to the hypotenuse of this triangle to B. So now I've got H to K is A to B. I've got H to K is X to Y. Oh, well H to K is still the same ratio. So I can do a little transit property here. Uh, so that must, must mean that X compared to Y is the same thing as H to K, which is the same thing as A to B. Or we can just bypass the H to K altogether. X compared to Y is A to B. Now, that is pretty cool. That says what in English? <laughs> Basically, it's saying if you take a triangle and you make a, an angle bisector of one of the angles, it's going to cut the opposite side into two pieces that are in the same ratio as x is to, or excuse me, as the sides that make the angle that was bisected. And I did say that in English, and I drew a picture for you. So, a bisector of an angle in a triangle divides the opposite side into two segments whose lengths are in the same ratio as the lengths that, that form the angle. And so here's the picture without the other right the right angles. You don't have to do it. I, that's, that's how I, I proved it for you. How it works. I used my similar triangles. And you knew it was going to be, you had to be uh, some part of similar triangles. So I hope that didn't that didn't confuse you too bad. I'll, I'll answer any questions you want to uh, when I see you tomorrow. Um, but that's the, that's, that's the big thing right there. This to Y is that piece compared to that piece. That, let's move on to some of the problems that I have for you. Here we go. There are four problems. I don't think that you'll have any problem. You'll know that there's my A's and my B's and the X's and Y's. Now, I did put my X here or a Y there and an A and things like that. Four problems, all using an angle bisector. That's an angle bisector, angle bisector, angle bisector, angle bisector. All right? And I want to know what they are, okay? Should be straightforward. I um, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay.